all right hi everyone so welcome back to the little coding so in today's video we are going to build a real-time chat application with next.js and superbase so let me show you what the demo look like so as you can see right here so this is a group chat only and we have the user number one and user number two right here and so since right now both of these users is online so that's why we see there's two online right here and if one of this close we will show only one online and also let's try to send a message so for example i hit say hey and this one we can see hey as well and this one say hi and we should be able to see hi as well and right now you can also do the action to only your message only and so right now let's say for example i try to edit here and i'm gonna go to hi update and as you can see this is also update and also for example if i try to edit here and for example edit with empty message hit save change this will prompt to the delete indicator so right now if i click here so right now this message is gone as well and i so also can delete the message from here as well so right now i try to delete so here you can see message here is gone as well also one more thing in this one for example this user when it's scroll reading the previous message we have this one and also when this user while scroll reading the previous message and i send a message hi and as you can see we have the indicator like there's a new a new message has been sent and for example hi again so there will be two so we click it's go down and you can see there's two new message right here okay so same things for this one i'm gonna say hello and right now you can see we have this one as well and also for this one we also implement the pagination as well so when i click load more it will fetch more and there's no more button so right now you can see there's no more message need to be fetched okay and also for example if i close this tab right here so you can see there's only one online user right now all right so i'm so excited to show you how to build this one so before we doing that so don't forget to like and subscribe so right now so let's start coding all right so the first step that we're going to do is to install next.js so you can go into next.js documentation and we can copy this command right here so we can paste this one and so since we're going to run this one inside our local folder right here so i'm going to do sl a dot slash right here so this will install everything inside this folder right here so here it will ask you a question so i'm going to choose yes for type scripts yes this one tell when yes this one no and this one yes and this one no and so right now so it will install everything for us all right great so right now our installation is complete so the next thing is we're going to do to install chat cn into our project so we go into chat here documentation and go to installation and then we can choose next.js right here so the first step right here we complete already so we can skip to the second part which is this one so i'm going to copy this one we're going to choose npm so right now if you can see this is our next uh, boilerplate so uh, we can paste the same and we press enter so this will ask us a bunch of questions as well i'm going to press y for this one and right here we're going to choose yes and for this one i'm going to choose default color thing and this one just press enter this one choose yes and this one just uh, leave it blank by pressing enter and just this one enter and enter enter and this one press yes and this one press y so it will install all of the uh, everything that needed for chat tn with our project so the next thing is with this one i wanted to set up the seams for this so you can choose go to the seam right here and then you can go to customize you can choose uh, customize your seam and choose any color you want and this is the color that i want i want the color violet right here so for that i'm going to copy this color right here and then we can navigate back into this one let's go into the global.css into the apps right here and global.css so this is the code that we need to replace so i'm going to scroll down for the layer right here until this one so then we can paste the new code that we just copy okay and so right here as you can see we have to tell win config right here so i want to remove the, the, the ts right here so we can keep the js only so the next thing that i wanted to install is the dark mode for our chat tn so let's go into dark mode and then we're going to choose next.js and then we can click on install next seems right here and then we can open back our terminal and then we can uh, paste this one and run and this is the component that we need to create so the scene provider so i'm going to copy this one and going back here inside the our component i'm going to create a new file which is this one and so we can just copy and paste the content from here okay so we paste i'm going to paste this one i hit save 
and this is where we're going to use it so we're going to use it inside of a layout so for that let's navigate to our layout and between this one right here so i'm going to add the scene provider and then make sure i put the body inside here and then we're going to copy all the attribute that we have here and then we paste it inside this one and for the default color of this one i'm going to choose dark as my default color all right so i think that's pretty much it for our installation and setup all right so right now if we navigate into our localhost 3000 we should be able to see this page right here so one thing about this one i wanted to change the font from enter to another font so it's going to be space this one right here so then we can change this one and we can change this one so this is going to be to lowercase and then for this one and hopefully if we refresh this one right now we should be able to see the updated font all right great so nice so right now let's go back into this page right here let's try to remove everything from here so i'm gonna do this one so we can run a command snippet ofc so if you do not have this snippet right here you can go into the extension and you can search for the es7 uh, react right here i think i believe this one right here so you can install this one so you should be able to run the snippet and right now it will generate the boilerplate for us so we have this one nice so for the layout of the page right here this one is going to be the max width to three excels i'm going to do the mx to auto and from the md up we're going to do py 10 and the height of this one is going to be screen okay so right now we should be able to uh, see this one so you can see when we on the larger screen we max only 3xl and when we go on the lower screen, uh, smaller screen, and then we have the full width right here. Nice. So right here, we have another container right here. And for this container, it is going to do the height of this one is going to be full. And we're going to have the borders around it. And then we're going to do the rounded to MD. And then there you go. So right now, we should be able to see this one. So you can see... Right now we have this layout right here so the next thing that we're going to do is to build the chat header so you can see right here this chat header that we have the title and the uh, action button that do us lock in and lock out right here all right so for the chat header right here so i'm gonna create another div for this one and the height of this one i'm gonna give it 20 and then so we're gonna have this div right here and for this one we're gonna have another div that this one is going to have the h1 so for now it's going to be a daily chat so if we hit save we should be able to see this and for this one let's do this one p5 let's do the border of this one to b so right now we should be able to see something like this nice and for this one uh, we're going to have another div to display the present number of online user so for now we're going to use with the statics number so I think this one we're going to have another div which is the class name of height to 4 and then width to 4, bg to green and then round it to full and then I'm going to do animation of this one to pulse. So we hit save we should be able to see this nice and we're going to have the this one is going to be two online okay. All right, so right now we have this one, nice. So make sure this one, I'm gonna do flex, flex item center, and then let's do gap of this one to one. So then we should see this. And for the tech of this one, let's go with the last name to tech to SM, and then let's do the text of this one to gray to 400, okay? nice and for the h1 right here i'm gonna give the tag of this one to excel and the font of this one is going to be bold okay this one ah i think this is not flag this is gonna be a text to excel right right now we have this one nice so inside here so we're gonna have another one is gonna have the button so if you look here so right here we have the button for the user to lock in and lock out and so with that we're gonna go outside here and then we are gonna have the button so the button for this one is going to be lock in okay and right now we need to import the install the button from chat cn so for that let's go into chat cn documentation and go into find the button 
and right here we can go click on install choose npm and right here i'm gonna open another terminal and so we're gonna paste this one and hit install so this is what we're gonna do we're going to import it from here which i'm gonna do i imported this one and right now we should be able to use this one okay so we hit save and if we go back we should be able to see the login button right here and so for this one let's do the select item center and then we're gonna do justify this one between okay nice so right now we should be able to see this this is what it look like on the larger screen nice so this one we're going to implement the login with github so and also we're gonna do toggle this one later when the user after the user login with the authenticate user all right so for that let's implement that all right so right now let's set up with superbase so install everything that's needed so first you need to create your superbase project so which i have already done here so the next step is we're going to set up with next.js so we can go into the documentation of superbase os with next.js right here and inside this documentation as you can see they recommend us to use a new package which is uh, this this one right here and also i think we need to install this one as well all right so maybe we can go into this doc click on this link the migration link and click on the npm install this one and go back inside our apps right here and i'm going to paste this command right here so first we need to install this package and another the package that we need to install is also the superbase.js right here so then i'm going to copy this one right here and then so i can paste this one and press enter so then we gonna install both of this library okay all right great so now after this one so we're going to create an env to store our superbase key so i'm going to copy this one and come back here inside our apps and then here i'm going to create the env dot local and here i'm going to paste this one so then we need to get the save superbase url and then the anon key and so this key right here you can find in superbase project by go to the project setting go to api and the url this one so we can just click copy this one i'm going to paste this one right here and i'm going to copy and paste this one right here as well all right so this is what it's needed for our super base so the next thing that uh, i wanted to do inside here so since we're going to log in with the github so we can follow this documentation uh, right here for our oas so i'm going to open this one in a new link and also if we want to create a setup of a client for superbase inside our app we can follow this link right here so right now let's do that so this is where we're going to set up a client for our next apps and so to do this one so you can scroll down as you can see we have the client component or the server component so for this one let's go ahead and do the superbase I'm going to create inside the lips right here. I'm going to create the another one. It's going to be Superbase. And then this one, we're going to have the browser and .ts. And this is where we're going to create the browser clients for it. So for that, I'm going to copy this one right here and paste this one. And I'm going to import this one by click on the control dot. So you can see it will auto import for me. So this is going to be a function. So it's going to be, I'm going to call this one as a super base super base uh, browser and i'm gonna make this one as a function okay which this function is going to return this client right here and right here i'm just gonna do export okay great so this is where we're gonna use our super base inside our client and the next one is i'm going to create a server .ts. and so for this one we go into the server component and then we can copy and paste this one right here okay so right now we can just copy and paste uh, everything from this one and then we can do auto import this one and then we need the cookie and also this one and then we need to import from the cookie the header right here as well all right so let's go here the cookie header and then we need to wrap around this one inside another function so i'm going to create another function this one is going to be on superbase server is going to be equal to the function which is this one i'm going to copy this one and then we're going to return this one right here okay so for this one i'm going to export this one as well and since this one on the server i'm going to use the use server on this top right key as well 
Great, so right now we have the server, so, so I think we can close this one. And the next thing is we're going to ins uh, get the, the middleware inside this one. So I'm going to copy this and go inside here. Make sure you do it outside the app folder. We're going to do the middleware.ts. And then we can just paste everything that we have right here. Okay. So right now, everything should be all good to go. So right now, our super base is set up is complete. So the next step that we're going to do is we're going to do it with our page right here with our button to log in and use it to log in with GitHub. All right. All right. So before we doing login with GitHub, so we need to go into the authentication and go to provider. And then so we're going to enable GitHub authentication inside our Superbase dashboard. So inside here, and then you can click on enable. So first we need to get a client ID and a client secret from this one. So for that, let's go into the GitHub profile and you can go to your GitHub profile. You scroll down to the developer setting and right here, click on OAuth. So you can click on create a new OAuth right here and you can give any name you want. So for example, I hit daily chats demo and the URL right here, you can choose the localhost 3000. And if you have another endpoint, for example, production, you can come back and change it later. But this one is still fine. And description here is optional. And the authorization callback, we need to go back in here and then we can copy this one. And so we can paste this one right here. So right now when you register the app, so we'll get a client ID. So you can copy this and paste this one right here. And right here, you can generate a new secret right here. So right now, as you can see, we have this client secret. So let's copy this one and then just paste this one right here. So right now, the next thing is just hit save and everything should be good to go. Great. So now let's go back inside this one right here. So for authenticate and then so we need to redirect and validate the code from the github so for that we can go follow this documentation uh, and then so we need to create the auth callback route that responsible for that so we can just copy this one and go inside here i'm going to create the auth folder and inside here we're going to have another callback folder as well and inside here we're going to have the routes.ts okay so right here you can just paste this one and we have everything that needed so this one is will be a change the code from github as you can see right here and then it will redirect to our region or if you have the pass it will redirect there if there is any error we redirect to this one so then uh, so all right so now let's go back inside our page right here and then let's implement the login right here okay so for this one what i'm going to do first i'm going to cut out this one and create a component for it instead so i'm going to create a, a new component it's going to be equal to chat header dot, dot tsx and i can paste run the snippet and then we can paste this one and for this one i just do control that it will auto import for me and right now we have this one so i'm going to transform this one into the use a client component because we're going to do the on click here and for this one, I can just remove and then I'm going to do the chat header right here. Okay. So right now, if we go back, this should be the same. Nice. Let's go into the chat header and create a function to lock in with GitHub. So let's do handle login with GitHub. And this one, and we should be able to call this one. So when this one is on click, we're going to call this one right here. Okay. All right. So this is a client component. So we need to use the Superbase browser. So for that, we're going to have a Superbase equal to the Superbase browser, which is going to be a function. And right now we can you do the Superbase dot auth dot right here is going to be sign in with the OAuth. And then we're going to choose the provider, which is going to be GitHub. And we're going to do the redirect right here. So we're going to have another options and i think this one is going to be an option and this one is going to be the redirect to and for this one just do location dot origin which is the current uh, uh, pass of which is localhost 3000 right here and this is going to be awesome and then let's just do a callback right here okay great so right now, there's no need to do the await right here. And so when we finish this one, we should be able to lock in the user. 
right now let's go back in here and try to click on the login and so you can see and click on the authorize so everything good we should redirect back here very nice so we go back inside this one and make sure that we have this user register and as you can see i have this user login great all right so right now we finished the login so the next thing that i wanted to do is to toggle between the login button and the lockout button right here all right so to do that i'm going back into our home page so since we have only one page right here so i'm going to fetch the user information inside this page right here and then we can pass down to the chat header so for that let's go call to superbase and then since this is on the server component so i'm going to call to the superbase server function and then from here we can get the user session by doing this one it's going to be the await superbase dot from uh, i think this one is going to be us instead it's going to be get session right here okay and then we should be able to have this data and then we can just for now console.log data right here so if we go into our terminal we should be able to see this information so what we're interested in is going to be data dot session and then this is going to be the user okay so right now we have this user information right here so we're going to pass this user into the chat header right here okay so now it's going to be a user and so we're going to do data dot sessions dot user okay great so for this one we need to go back inside our chat header to make the prop of this user going back here this one is going to be have a user and we have a user and the user is going to be the user type from superbase and i think i believe this is another one is going to be undefined so we had saved this one uh, so you can see the typescript here is gone as well great so right now we can come back here for this button and i can create another button for this one is going to be lockout and so right here based on the the user info right here if there's a user we going to render the button lockout and else we going to render this button okay so we hit save so you can see right now it's going to lock out great so right now let's try to implement the lockout functionality here so scroll up here i'm going to create another function is going to be handle lockout and this one is going to have we're going to call to superbase as well and this is going to be pretty simple it's going to be superbase dot os dot sign out right here this one we need to do the await so from after this one this one we need to have an async and right here we need to do router dot refresh to refresh the page so for this one we're going to use the router use uh, router this one from the use navigation make sure you can use this one and then we're gonna call this one router.refresh so let's hit save this one and right now going back here we're gonna change the function this of this lockout to handle lockout okay if we refresh this one let's try to click on this one again so you can see when we click it refresh let's go back to login and right now if i click back on login we should be able to see the lockout Great. All right. So right now, if we go back inside our page, so if we can see that we have this session, but this session is fetched from the server because this one is run on the server component, and this is passed to the client component. So if we want to pass this user information, for example, right here to the other client component, we have to do as a prop. So another thing that I wanted to do, I want to create the client state that is going to get this data user right here and use it. Uh, global so the, any client component can access it without just passing as a prop all right so for that i'm going to use the state management library i'm going to use that stand right here so this is a really small package so it's suitable for this one so for that let's go and ahead and install this one so i'm going to copy this one open our terminal and i'm going to run this one right here so right here since we go and we work with typescript so let's go with the typescript guy and then copy this one so i'm going to copy this one right here and inside this one uh, our apps and then let's go inside our lips inside here i'm going to create another folder called store 
and then inside the store right key i'm going to create the user.ts okay and right key just paste this one so right now let's change this one to the user state instead so the user state instead of the bear state and this one is going to be use user and for this one we're going to do the user and for the user right here we're going to have the user types or another one is going to be undefined right undefined great so right now we can just leave this one and let's let's have these only the user right here okay we have this user and then this one the default value of this one can be undefined and for this one let's just export this one right here great so right here you can see the small of this one is just only three kilobyte okay so right now we have this uh, function user so let's use this one uh, this use user right here to set the state from the data session right here so for that i'm going to create another component inside the store so this is going to be init user.tsx all right and then we're gonna run the snippet OFC and this is not going to return anything uh, just going to return null and or maybe just return the empty JSX all right okay so right now for this one I'm going to run the use effect and for this use effect is going to here and for this one it's going to accept the prop as a user and the type of this user is going to be user and then uh, user and then this one is going to be all undefined and from here we going to create the reference so init is going to be use ref use ref right here and this one is going to be fall and we going to check if init dot current if it's not init dot current so we going to call to use user so it's going to be uh, use user dot set state and we're going to have the user right here where it's going to pass to this one okay and then from here i'm going to do the init dot current is going to be equal to true okay maybe this one should be init um init state and then this one i'm just going to change this one right here and for the dependency right here maybe we can ignore this one so this one is going to be eslin disable next slide all right so right now we have this one so let's call this one inside our page and then we can have these in it right here so for that we can we can run this one as we add another fragment and then we can add this one right here our init user and then we can cut this one and paste it right here okay so here we can do control dot it will auto import for me for this one and for the init this one right here we need to make it as the use client because this is a client component so right now i hit save the, sh the error should be gone and for this one we need to have a user and it's going to be data.sessions.user as well okay so right now we init this one so for this one we can still pass this one it's fine because this component use directly but this one we can use it for a user information for deeper component like a smaller and deeper component all right great the next thing that we wanted to do is to adding a user information to the user table so as right now after the user login we just be able to create in the ask table user but we want to have the user table right here where it's going to store record of the user all right all right so to do that it's going to be really simple so we're going to create a new table going to table editor right here and then going to create a user right here and for this user for the id is going to be the uuid and then this one can link into the os table so for os and then scroll down for the user and then we're going to do cascade and cascade this one right here okay let it save and then another one is going to be the display name of the user and this is going to be a text the nullable is going to be fall and another one is going to be the avatar 
underscore URL. And this is going to be a tag as well. And this is not notable. All right. So we have only this three column because we want to use this one to display when we have a message. And then we can reference back to this one to show the user our that. And right now, so this one we can click save. Okay, so to in order to insert this one, we can just use a trigger function to insert into this one. For the trigger function, you can go into this one. It's going to be the daily blocks demo. I think this is my blog post that I create in my previous video. And you can go into block the boilerplate. And this is the trigger function that we're going to copy. So I'm going to copy from this one. And then let's go back inside here. And let's go into our function and create a new function. So for here, you can give a name to create user on sign up. And the type of this one is going to be a trigger and we can paste this one. So here we need to change a little bit. So we do not need this one. So I'm going to remove this. Okay. And for this user right here, so you can see this one is begin insert into the public user table is the user table that we just create. And this is the field of the each table that we have. So for this one, we do not have the email. So I'm going to remove this one and the image URL. We do not, we have the avatar URL right here. Okay. So I'm going to copy this one and paste this one right here. So right now we should be able to, good to go. Maybe I need to remove this one. Okay. Right here we insert display name, avatar URL, get from the this one username and avatar. So this one is a raw metadata that we get from GitHub. So if you implement this one with another authentication, you probably look into the raw metadata, make sure to get this information and fit it to this one. Okay. So right now for the so advanced setting right here, we're gonna choose a security defender. Okay. Right now, let's hit confirm on this one. So right now, we need to create a trigger. So for the trigger, we need to run a command line as well to do that. So for that, let's go back into this boilerplate and we can copy this function right here. Okay. So right now, let's go back in here, go to actual editor. And right now, we can just paste this one. And for the function name right here, we're going to replace with the function that we're going to create earlier and for the trigger name you can call whatever you want i'm just going to call the the same function name okay so maybe i can zoom it a little bit so we can see better and right now let's try to run this one okay so right now as you can see success no and then let's go back inside the database and go into trigger if you filter to the auth table you should be able to see this one right here great so right now, let's go inside the auth table user. So I'm going to remove this user for now. And so we need to log in again to be able to have the record. So going back to our application, I need to log out from here. I refresh if I log in. If everything successfully, it means our trigger function is successfully set up. So right now, as you can see, we are logged in. And if we navigate back, we have this user. And if we go into the table editor, we should be able to have the user information right here as well. All right, that's nice. All right, great. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to build the UI for our chat message right here. All right, so for now, we're going to build the UI of our chat. So inside here, I'm going to create another div. This will be this two div right here and this one. And for this one, let's give this one is uh, as a flex. And then we're going to do the flex call. And so for this one, let's going to do the flex one. So this one will take the entire space. So for example, if I do the background color right here, we should be able to see this one. And this one is we're going to have to put the input at the end. So for that, let's go. I'm going to give this one a P5. And as you can see, we have this one. And so for this one, we're going to put our input component. So for that, let's install this one from a chat CN. I'm going to go search for input and we can go here, choose NPM, and then we can come back here and then we can run install this one. Okay. So from here, we can just copy this and then we can use our input. So our input right here, I'm going to just going to do this one right here. Right now, let's go back. We should be able to see our input right here. And then we can add some placeholder. It's going to be the send message right here. 
Okay, so right now we can see this is our layout where we render our message. And so scene of a message will render from the bottom and to the top. So right here we can split another this one. So for here we can do the same thing. We're gonna flex, flex call. And inside here we're gonna have another two div that do exactly the same thing. So we have this one, and we're gonna have the this one is going to be flex one that will take the entire space. So and then for this one, let's do the P5 for this one as well. Okay. Okay, so for this one is where we're going to render our message. So as of now, I am going to render our message as a static. So later on, we're going to add it with the real data. So for that inside here, I'm going to have another div. And this one, we're going to have another div. This one is going to be high, for high 10 with the 10. And then let's do BG of this one is going to be green 500. So we should be able to see this. And I'm going to do this one is going to be around it to full. Okay. So this is try to stimulate the, the avatar. And from here, we're going to do the flag on this one. So we're going to have another div that this one going to have another div again. And this one, we're going to have a name. For example, this is going to be my name. It's going to be so So we have this. We'll try to do flag this one. And then let's do the gap of this one to two. Okay, so right now we have the space. And for the name right here, let's do the font of this one to bold. Okay, and then for this name, we're going to have another. This one is going to be a date. So for now, I'm just going to be uh, the new date dot to date string. Okay, and this one is going to be the text to SM. And I'm going to do the text gray of this one to 400. And let's do the flag on this one. It's going to be flex and then uh, let's do item center and then gap of this one to one as well so right now we should be able to see this and the next thing is we're going to have the message where this is going to be the message so for now let's try to copy some random message for example this one right here and i'm just going to make it a, a lot right here so we should be able to see this and as you can see it distort this one so for that just let's give this one a flex one and this one will resolve this one nice and for the text right here let's give a different color maybe text gray to 300 so then it's not uh, shining a lot okay so this is our message that looked good so for this one we can try to make it scroll only this part only and so for that i'm going to try to simulate uh, this one by looping this one so right now i'm going to generate the array right here and then let's map this one. Right now we're gonna have the value and which is going to return the our message component right here, okay? So right now we can just return this one and then this one is we need to have a key and for now the key is going to be the value of this one. Okay, so maybe I think I should add more of this one, probably um, nine, 11, 12, things like that. So. Okay, this is what we want, so we we gonna fix this one, and but for now let's fix this one first. So for this one, I am going to give this one a space y to five. So right now, as you can see, it's a little bit space between these two. Maybe let's go with seven. It's a little bit bigger. Great. So right now, let's try to fix this scroll bar right here. So for this one, for this flex call, I'm gonna give the height to and for the overflow y of this one let's go with the auto okay and now as you can see right now it's, it's scroll only and this feel only okay all right so but there's something wrong with this one so you can see when we scroll we uh, i see i think i think this one is fine Okay, so right now it's scroll this one, but the only problem that we have right now is, as you can see, when we scroll, we the it's past this border. All right, so to fix this one, I think we can go into our chat header and let's give the height of this one to full. So it's take the maximum height from this one. So as you can see right now, when we scroll, ah, oh, oh no, this one is gonna be the full right here. So right now, as you can see, when we scroll this one, we do not have that, uh, UI before. 
okay this is looking good all right nice all right so the next thing that we're going to do we're going to work on the send a message right here so right now when we click on send right here do not do anything all right so right now i'm going to create a new component so for the chat input right here so for that let's go inside here and inside this component and i'm going to create a new one it's going to be chat input okay and this one and then i'm going to cut this one right here I'm going to do OFC and then so we can paste this one right here and this one we're going to make it as a client component so for that let's do use client and right here let's auto import this one by control dot and you will have this one right here so right now going back I'm going to import this one in chat input and I think we believe uh, I need to remove this one right here okay nice so right now inside the chat input right here we're gonna listen so for every time when a user click on this one we are going to listen for that even and to get this message so for that i'm going to do this one is going to be on key down so we get the value right here and this one we i'm going to put in a function to handle this one so it's gonna be handle send message okay this is going to be arrow function and then we're going to call this one so for this one we're going to check if the e dot key is equal to the enter so if the user pressed on the enter key and so we're going to call to handle message right here and then we're going to pass the e dot current target dot value okay dot value so basically we're going to get all of the key from here all the value from here so this is we're gonna get the message which is gonna be as a text and this is gonna be a string so right now so when the user click on here so we should be able to do the alert so if just a uh, hello uh, or maybe just alert the message itself the text right here okay so now for example when i click on this one so it's nothing happened huh all right so maybe if i refresh this one and try to do it again so as you can see right now we should be able to see this one right here nice and after we get this message we need to e dot current target dot value is to empty so then we're going to clear this value all right so right now what i'm going to do is to when i click here so you can see we do alert and after that it's clear this message nice so right now the next thing that we wanted to do for this one is to call to superbase to insert the new message to this one so for that we're going to go into superbase and create a new message table to add our message right here all right so right now we're going to superbase dashboard and inside here i'm going to create a new table and this table right here is going to be messages and for this one we're going to enable real time because we want to listen to unchain on this one and for the id of this one it's going to be the uuid auto generate for us and then we're going to have multiple field inside here so the first one is going to be text and the type is going to be text if this is not nullable and another one is going to be is it did and then this is going to be boolean and this is not nullable as well and the default value of this one i'm going to set it to fall and another one is going to be send by so this is going to be related to the user table so this one and then we can add the action to cascade which means if the user table if the user record is delete so the message all of the user is going to be delete as well and then we're going to do auto generate for this one it will using the auth the request id and then this is not going to be not nullable as well all right great so right now we should be able to do this and then hit save so the next thing that we wanted to do for this one is to set up the policy for this message so then we'll be able to add some do some action to it and let's go to the new policy click on quick this one and this is for the read policy so who so what i want is like for the user to read this one they need to be authenticated and basically true and as you can see and right now let's save this policy so the next one is going to be the insert policy so you need to be authenticated to be uh, to insert and also the send by the send by is need to be equal to 
that UID. So make sure that you are sending the this uh, right here. And the another thing is I'm gonna do is gonna be created at is gonna be equal to now. Okay. And I think for this one we can just do end right here and then hit review and hit save this one. All right, so the next thing is for the delete and update. So for the delete, we want to them to up, uh, delete based on the ID, so they can delete their message only. So for this one, it's going to be send by, all right? And then we need to be authenticated, and then we can just, maybe I can copy this one. We can use it later. Save this one. And for the update, it's going to be the same policy as this one. But let's go for update need to be authenticated and then for this one as well and we need to change the name because this name cannot be duplicated and yeah so right now we click review on this one and hit save okay so i think i messed up for the policy let's go back again for the update choose update ah i can copy this one and this one authenticated and update all right and hit review hit save so right now we have all the policy setups. So then we can come back and sign our chat input right here and let's do and connect to this insert to this table. All right, so right here we're gonna use Superbase client since this is a client component. So for that, I'm going to create a Superbase variable. It's gonna be Superbase browser right here. And then so we can call Superbase right here. I think for this one first i think it's much easier to insert into this table if we know the type of this one so for that we can generate the type so you can do superbase generate types and this one is going to go into the first link here so this is what you need to do so the first one is we're going to install the cli right here at the save at the dave dependency so let's go ahead and do that i'm going to go here and then i'm going to paste this one and the next thing that we're going to do, we need to do the login of this one right here. So I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to paste this one right here. So right now this will auto lock in for us. This is pretty easy. So then just press enter. As you can see, it will auto lock in for me. Nice. And so now I already lock in so I can be able to run this command right here. So for this command right here, this is will generate the types from our table. So you need the project reference. So for that, let's go back inside here and go to project setting. And this is the reference ID. So I can just copy this one. And so we can just paste right between this one. Nice. And the next thing is, this is where the paths of the types will be stored. And so for that, I'm going to create inside the, put it inside the lips right here. So for this, I'm going to create another folder called types. And then I'm going to change the path for this one. It's going to be to lips slash types right here. So now if I press enter this one, so this should uh, install and add a type for me. Nice. So I close this one. And if I go to the types right here, so as you can see, it this will fetch all the table that exists inside this one or the function that can be called the ball inside here. So for this one, we can use it inside our Superbase. And then we can do something like this. And then we can do database. And for the server, if we work with the server, we can do something like this as well. Database as well. All right. Wait, so right now, make sure we hit save. So after we're doing this one, if we, call, if we come back into this one, if I go with Superbase, but from... So as you can see, it gives me the intelligence of the table that we have. So right now we're gonna go with the message right here and then we're gonna do insert into this one. And the field that we need to pass is gonna be the text and which is gonna be this one. So for the rest of the field, it will be auto-generate for me so I don't have to pass anything else. And so as of now, let's do something like this and let's do the await and do the A thing on this one. And right now we're going to listen for the error only. So error from here. And we're going to check if if we have any error, we're going to toss something to the user. And so to toss this message to the user, I'm going to use the library from Shetzian. Is the Suna right here. Okay. So for that, I'm going to copy this one. 
and then I'm going to install this. The use this is really simple. So first we need to pass this one inside uh, this one to our layout. And then I come back here and then probably I will put it in between the this one right here. So it's going to be poster component. And then we can give the position of this one. So I think for this one is going to be the position. We can do this. It's going to be top center. And all right, so that's it. So right now, go back into our chat input. So if there's an error, I'm going to do task that message. So as you can see, this is auto import for me. And that message, this is going to be task error. And for this one, what are we going to do is display the error that message. Okay. Great. So right now, let's go back in here. Let's send a message. It is going to be hello. Well. So right now, everything, if you can see, there's no error. So it looks like everything is going through. And if you look at the table right here, we should be able to see this data. Nice. So right now, one thing that we want to improve this one, as you can see, uh, for the user, for example, I am sending a message, right? I should see the message immediately. So for that, we need to do the optimistic update and insert the message. So I'm going to do send a message again. For example, this is a real message. I'm going to send and I'm going to send right here. So right now if we go back, we should be about four records. And so I think the first thing that I'm going to do is to list the message first. And then we're going to come back and update the message right here to do the optimistic update and to show that the user, the message has been sent. All right. All right. So right now we're going to render the message here. So for that, I'm going to go into the page. So there are different ways you can fetch the data. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to fetch the data from the server and then I'm going to pass it to the client. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. So for this one, this is the our list of message. So for this one, I'm going to create this one into a new component and then I'm going to cut this one. And then inside the component right here, this is going to be a list of messages, list messages. And then I'm going to run a snippet and then I'm going to paste this one right here. Okay. So we hit save. So we should be able to see this one. And so inside here, I'm going to do the list of, so this one is going to be list of message, list messages. Okay, great. So now everything should stay the same. So for the fetch right here, I'm going to create another component and then we're going to do subspend fetch for the, this one. So for that, I am going to create a new component inside here is going to be chat messages dot tsx and for the chat messages right here we'll have the list of messages inside here okay and for the list of message right here i need to make this one as a client component so i'm going to do use a client component and we should be able to have this nice so right now, instead of doing the list of messages, we're going to do the chat messages instead. And so now let's go into our chat messages. Maybe let's save this one first. And so for this one, I'm going to uh, import the suspense. And, and then this one is going to be the fallbacks is going to be equal to loading. Okay, so for now, we can have the text loading. We have the subspend right here. So this is where we going to fetch the message. All right. So right here. So this is in, this is a server component. So I can create, get the super base from the server. Super base equal to oh, um, super base server right here. And right here we can call to super base dot from messages. And then we're going to do select this one is going to be select star. And also we need to get the image URL and display name. And so for that, we need to add the user from the user table. See, there's a relationship here. So for this one is going to be, we're going to select star from here as well. And so let's just do a wait here. And for this one is going to have the data right here. All right. So right now we have this data. 
and so for this one let's console that lock the message first data and if we go over our terminal if we go back here so right now as you can see we'll be able to fetch the message but we do not be able to fetch the user so the user is no so for that the problem with this one is because we do not have the policy for the user table yet so let's do it so come back here so for this one we just enable read the policy only and so i'm going to use this template selects so you need to be authenticated to be select the user click review and let hit save the policy great so right now if we going back here if i refresh this one so it will fetch this one again so as you can see right now we have all of the user information alongside the message that is being sent as well okay great so right now we have this message right here so what i'm gonna do is the same thing i'm gonna pass this message right here into the client state so then we can use it to render inside here so rather than i passing as a prop to this message i am going to pass into the zastan state so then we can use it to manipulate this one easier than passing directly to this component okay all right so for that i'm going to go into this one lib store and then i'm going to create another one is going to be the messages and dot ts so same thing for the user so for now i'm just going to copy this one right here and then i'm going to paste this one so we're just going to change a couple things here instead of the user state and this is going to be the message state and for this one we're going to have the list of the messages and so so right now we need to define the type of the messages so i'm going to do export the i now the export types and the, this one is going to be i message which is going to be the type of the message and so for to get the type of this one so we can go back in here so if you hover on this one you should be able to see what kind of data that we have here so for now i'm going to copy this one and going back to our message and then i'm going to replace it right here but the thing about this one is that this is a single message so then we don't need the array right here so i can remove both of this one okay so right now we have this message so then let's hit save and so we're going to have to change the state of this one to the message just instead. And then for this one is going to be the uh, empty array. And then we're going to do the message right here. This is not an empty array. This is like an I message array. And the default value is going to be empty array right here. Okay. And this one is going to be use message. All right. Great. So right now we have this one so let's do the same thing for the user i'm going to create another this one is going to be init message uh, messages dot tsx okay and i'm going to copy this one and paste it right here and so the init this one is going to be the init messages and so for this one it's going to be use message so we do not need this one and set state is going to be messages so the, uh, for this prop it's going to pass the messages to us and the message right here is going to be i uh, the time is going to be i messages okay great so right now we should be able to have this one and so we can have this one inside our um, uh, chat messages i'm going to do init messages that we have here and then so we're going to pass the messages right here into the data right uh, so as a data right here so right here this is going to be the type is going to be different and so because as you can see this is going to be null so for this one i'm going to do or empty this one all right so right now this is should be so if there's a data if there's no data we're going to just pass the empty array and if if not then we can just have the data all right so right now we should be able to have this message let's use this to render this message right here it's going back here and right now i'm going to have the use the use message and from here i can extract the state so the state is going to be messages and so we're going to have the messages right here so the reason if we do that state right here so rather than spread the array 
so it would be better to select the individual of what you need it from the just then all right so right now we can have this one so as of now maybe we can just use this one to render the message that maps and we can have the index on this one and for the index right here let's use it for a key instead so right now let's just save this one and see so you can see we have four value because we have the four messages inside our table as well right so it means we render the right message for this one right so for this one instead of doing here i'm going to split this one into a new component and then we can just pass the value directly to this one so for that i am going to create another component is going to be message or we can yeah just message about tsx and we have this message right here so for this one i'm going to cut this component right here into the message component okay and so we can remove this one right so right now we have this message component so let's bring it back here message and the key of this one is going to be index and so we're going to pass the value of this one so this is going to be the message and then we're going to have the value okay so if we hover the value we can see this is a type that needed we can come back here and have the message and the type of our message is going to be i message okay great so we had save this one and right now for this message right here we can change from this one to the message dot text and so we should be able to see this one and for the string right here so we need to pass the message dot create that and right now this is should the date is still the same and for the name right here is going to be message dot user dot display name so right now as you can see so what else do we need to change i think the last one is going to be the image url right here so instead of doing this one we're going to use the image component instead and so i think we need to import image from next slash image okay and the source of this one is going to be message dot user dot avatar url since this is prob uh, probably null so maybe we can do this one and the next thing that from here it's need the l and then this one is going to be the message i'm going to use the message okay i'm not sure why it's it's not auto until it's sent for me so maybe i can just copy this one and paste this one right here okay all right so right now as you can see we have this error so we need to add the width and height to this one and this one is might be null that's why we have the squishy line so for that we can use this sign all right so right now for this let's just give a width of this one so the width of this one let's go with 40 and the height of this one is going to be 40 as well and also for the image for here so right now if i hit save it's still wrong because we need to adding the host name to our next configs so for that let's go into the next config right here and let's do the image and here we're going to have the remote pattern this is going to be the array and right here we're going to add the host name so right here we can just copy this one so this is going to be because the host name and then we're going to have the protocol of this one is going to be https okay so within we change the next config right here so one thing that we need to do is we need to restart our server so right now i can run npm run dev again so after this complete the arrow should be gone all right, so right now I can close this one. Let's navigate back into our message. And let's hit save this one right here. So right now we should be able to, okay, see this one. And as you can see, we have this message right here. Very nice. So right now the, uh, this one is pretty uh, distorted. So I'm not sure why. But let's do the class name and but then this one is going to be the rounded to full okay so okay so look like there's something wrong with this one 
maybe what I can do for this one, I can wrap around this one around a div. So you can see right now it's all gone. So we have a nice image right here. So we can do some style of this one. Maybe I can add the ring two to this one. Add some border here. Okay, now that's great. So right now we finish listing our message. And so as you can see right here, we have the, the message right here that is empty. So I think we can come back and update our chat input that not allow empty message to be sent. All right, so right now let's work on the optimistic update for our message right here. Or let's go in for that. Let's go into the chat component. It's going to be the chat input right here. And so this is where we're going to need to create the update and adding this one since we're going to add a new message. So right now I can do hello. And this is sending and adding a message to our database. But we need to add in the optimistic and the user can see it immediately. So for that, I'm going to create the new message. It's going to be like this because the new message is going to be the same type as the I message. So then we need to fill out of the type of this one and then we add it to the state. So for this one, we need to, first one is we're going to need an ID that which is going to be a string. I think for this ID right here, we need to generate this one. So I'm going to do the NPM UUID. So I'm going to install this one which I'm going to copy from here and open our terminal and then we import this one and this is how to use it so copy this and so I think right now we need the type for this one as well so as you can see this is here with the error and then so we can just follow that and install the type for this one as well okay so right now the error should be gone if I hit save this one nice so for the ID right here is going to be the UUID or right here I believe this is how we call it okay nice and so right now we have the ID right here so we're gonna have the text and then we're gonna have the send by ID so for the send by ID we need the user ID so for this one is gonna be a user it's gonna use user we're gonna have the state and the state this one is gonna be user and then we're gonna do the user dot ID right here okay user.id and okay so this could be this this could be undefined and we can do something like here nice and then for another one is going to be is it did right here is going to be default and then we can have the user information so for the user information we can have the user dot id and then we're going to have another field for this one. If you look at the message right here, so we're going to have this field, right? So I'm going to copy this field right here. We have the avatar URL. This one, which is going to be the user dot user metadata dot the avatar URL. All right. And for created at for this one, we can just get the, the data now. I think I forgot to create it at for this one as well. Let's create it at probably in the new date. And then this one we need to transform into this string right here. Okay. And so I can just copy and paste this one. And for the display name right here, this is going to be the same thing with this one. And this is going to be the username. Okay. Make sure we do comma. All right. So right now we have this new message right here. And so we need to create a function inside our message right here to be able to update this message. So for that, I'm going to create a, a function. It's going to be add message. That is going to take the message, the type of it is going to be I message. And the return type is this going to be a void. And for this one, we're going to do add message. And this is going to be a function. Uh, this is going to be the new message and this one is going to be arrow function and then we're going to do set and then we're going to have the previous state so what we're going to do is to return this right here so return the messages and then so for that we're going to spread the old state is going to be state dot messages okay and right now, and the next thing is we're just adding the new message to this one right here. Great. 
So right now we should be able to use this add new message. And so we go come back here. And so I'm going to call use message. And we can have the state. And the state right here is going to be at, uh, no, not messages. It's going to be at message. And for this one, I'm going to add this one. So right here, we can call the add message before the arrow right here. And so it's going to be the new message. Okay, so right here, probably there's some going to be typed error right here. As you can see, a string, the user, undefined. Okay, it's not assigned to all the type. And the send by, okay. All right, so I think for this one, what we are going to do, I'm going to just uh, cast the type of this one as the type iMessage, okay? So right now we should be able to do the optimistic. So this is going to be optimistic message, add message. And then let's refresh this one. So right now we get the latest message. I'm going to do, hey, so you can see we have this message. And so right now, as you can see, this is okay. All right, so here, uh, what we're going to do next is to prevent the user send empty message. For example, I can just send empty message right here. It also create a new record inside here as well. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if the text.trim, so if you remove all the space, if there's a value, and then we go into all of this one, okay? And else, probably we're going to do the task, the arrow for the user. Um, I think I'm going to do the task error. So message cannot be empty. Okay. So now we do this. So right now, if they try to hit send a message, so you can see the message cannot be empty. So they need to send a message. Nice. Okay. So I think for adding the message is done. So the next thing that we're going to do is going to remove and it did the be able to remove and edit the message all right so for delete and edit we have the action button as you can see this is belong to the user who sent it we'll see this so for this example this user sent it since we do not send this user we do not have this action button and so right now first we let's try to build this ui to render this button first so for that let's go into the message component and so this is where we render our date and so i'm going to add the action button to here so for that, let's first let's install the drop down menu. This is where we are going to use to render that. And so we go to chat CN and then to install that, I'm going to copy this one, choose NPM and I'll open my terminal and open another install terminal right here. So right here, I'm going to install this one. So this is what we're going to add, which is going to be uh, this one right here. Okay. So right now I'm going to copy this one and then I'm going to paste it right here. And so for this one, maybe I can try to create another one is going to be cons uh, message menu. All right. Now what is this one is going to return, which is going to be this one right here. I'm going to paste this one. So right now we should be able to have this one. So for the open right here, we're going to use the Lucid Chat. Um, I think it's going to be the Lucid Chat React. And if you go here, and then you can go into the color icon. So maybe this icon right here. So we can search for menu. And this is what we want. So we can click on this one. And this is for React. We have to do this. So this is the component. So I'm going to copy this component right here. And then I'm going to paste this one. So this library is coming in with the chat CN. So it's automatically installed for us already. So and what I need to do here, I just do control dot. It will uh, give me a suggestion here. So it will auto import for me here. Nice. So right now we should be able to have this one. And so we can edit alongside our date. So this is going to be the uh, message menu. Message. This one is going to be a message menu. And right now, if we go back here, we should be able to see this one. Okay, nice. And so right now, we need to push this one at the end. So the way that we do that, we um, so we need to wrap this one in another div. And then we need to copy this flex for um, this div right here. 
last name and then we flag this one and but for this one let's just do justify this one is going to be in between so you can see it push this one to the end right here and so for this one there's no need a gap for this okay so right now we have this one so let's try to remove some field right here so what we want is to i think for this one it's going to be action and then we're going to have two menu this one is going to be the edit and another one is going to be delete okay nice so right now we have this one okay so and for this one uh, the way that we can render this one since we have the message user info so we can do it to render this one as well so inside each of the message we can uh, get the user id so by running this one so user equal to use user and i'm gonna do the state and then we're gonna do state dot user and then right here we're gonna do if the message if message dot user that id is equal to the user that id and if it's true we're gonna render this message menu okay so right now since we have only one user and so that's why we when the user that's why this is stay there but different user send a message we will not see there so you can see the condition is true that's why we render this one okay nice so right now the next thing that we wanted to do when we click on this one there will be a pop-up alert and a dialog alert to show the user are they confirmed to do this or not so just as a demo so you can see when i click on delete will pop up and sure and ask me to if i want to delete or not all right so let's build that all right so for the dialog pop up and the alert alert dialog here so one thing is that i'm not going to render that for every message here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create the dialog action or only one for delete and edit and then we can reuse a bullet for every action when we perform of the action okay so for that i'm going to create a new component inside here and i am going to call it is going to be message action all right and this is going to be the dot tsx and right here i'm going to just going to do this first so first we're going to do the alert dialog for the delete so we can go back to chatian and we can search for the alert dialog and this is what it looks like so when you click it we have the can you and can sell just like in our demo and so right now i'm going to copy this one and then we're going to install this one right here and inside here i'm going to just come back and copy this one and probably i'm going to remove this one the default right here and then we going to import this one maybe what i can do is i can copy the whole code over here i'm going to copy everything from this one i'm going to paste this one right here so right now we should be have this one and then and so for this one is going to be delete alert all right so and then we have the show dialog right here so right now where i'm going to put this one so the delete alert right here i'm going to put it inside the list of message and which is going to be i think i'm going to put it between here so delete alert all right so right now if we go back in here we should be about to see the show dialog and click up it will pop up so one thing about this one we can disable the remove this one right here and so now and we can put we can put the empty button inside you can see we do not see this one but i'm going to give the id of this one is going to be trigger delete all right nice so in order to pop up this trigger one thing we can do we can go back inside our message action right here so whenever we click on this item we can use it to open that alert so this is going to be on click this is going to be on click and then what i'm going to do here is going to be document I'll get element by id is going to be trigger delete and then we're just going to do dot click okay so right now if i click on the delete button uh, oh this one is edit okay so maybe i can i need to cut this one this is belong for edit only this is right here right now if i click on delete so as you can see the alert is pop up and nice great so right now you may ask okay if we do this how can we know which 
action or which message that we're going to do so for that i'm going to keep track of the state of when we click in here we can keep up the state of the message that we are going to delete all right so for that let's go into the our message right here which is going to be message store i'm going to create a new state for this one is going to be action message so this is we're going to keep track of which message that we're going to perform the action and so right now we should be able to have do this and then let's do the undefined as a noun and this one we need to give a state is going to be undefined as well okay so right now we have this action message okay let's refresh this one it's still all good so right now i'm going to do set the actions message and so we're going to have the message right here i think maybe we should create a type for this one first and this one is going to be message which is going to be the type of i message or undefined right here that is going to return a void and so right now this is just going to be set state so i'm going to just do this one probably we do not have the state right here and this one is going to be the action message with the new message that we have so it's going to be this message right here okay so we're gonna reuse this message uh, this one all right so okay so right now we have this set message right here let's go back into our message menu component and use it so right here i'm gonna do use uh, message and then from here we're gonna do state and this is going to be state dot set message action and we should be able to reuse this one right here now we're gonna have this one and so where do we get the message so we can pass this as a props to our message menu and so for um, our message menu right here we're gonna have the props it's gonna be a message where uh, the type of this one is gonna be i message and so right here we're gonna have the message where this is a message right here okay nice so right now we have this one so whenever we call to this function right here we're gonna do set message actions with the message that we have all right so this is what we want so okay nice so right now we should be able to uh, this one and so when i click on edit so i can know which action message that i have so if we go back to message action right here we can grab the state of this one and so it's going to be use message we can have state and then this is state of the action message and so right here we can get the action message right here and so right now i can just show you for example the action message dot let's say text right here or the id basically when we delete we need only the id only right so when i click on the it delete right here so right here as you can see we have this uh, delete um, id and also when i create a new message i'm gonna say hello world right here so right now if i click on delete so you can see i have this id right here as well nice so right now the next step that we're going to do since we have all this id we're going to call to superbase and to delete when we click on the button continue right here all right so right now we're going to do this so i'm going to scroll up here and then i'm going to create a function called handle delete message this one delete message and so for this one we're going to do something here all right so for the delete message right here we're going to call to superbase so i'm going to do superbase equal to superbase so this is uh, this is going to be a browser client so this is going to be a client component maybe i think we need to specify this one as a use client as well and so right now when we on click on this one so for example on the click on here and then we're going to call to handle the lead message all right and right now we have this browser and then so what we do is going to do superbase that prompt message dot delete and then the only thing that we need to do we need to kind of pass the id of this one which is going to be the actions message dot id okay and so this one just do the dot operator because this might be undefined that's why we have the squishy line but to avoid that we can do this and then we can do the await right here okay 
So since we do the await, we need an async here. So right here, we are going to have the data and all the error of this one. If we have any error or data. Okay, so we're going to do the task. If there's a data, or probably there's, we don't need the data. If there's an error, we're going to do task dot error and then this one is going to be error dot message okay else we're going to toss something else which is going to be the not the error but it's going to be the success one and we can have to display the message right here success fully delete uh, message okay great so right now this should be good to go so for example, I have the empty message right here. So I'm going to click on this one, click on delete and click on continue. So you can see we have delete successfully. But right now on the state right here, we do we still see this one. So what we need to do, we need to optimistic and update the state right here. Okay. So for that, let's come back here. I'm going to create another function is going to be equal to delete message. And so for this one, we need the message ID and this is going to be return a boy and for this one it's going to be a string okay so for the delete message function this is going to be really simple but we're going to have the message id which is going to be a string and one thing i can do i can just copy and paste this one right here okay so right now we have this one so maybe one thing about this one i can just remove this first so we're going to do this and this is going to return and we're going to have the object here we're going to have the message and for this one it's going to do state dot messages and for this one we're just going to do filter and we're going to have leave you a message and then we're just going to check if the message dot id make sure it's not equal to the message id that we passed okay so right now we should be able to have this delete message optimistic delete message maybe I think one thing that I can do is like optimistic and so and then for this one right here optimistic delete message all right so I think for the name right here I should be do the optimistic uh, add message as well okay so right now we should have this function we can use it inside the message action so from here I can find optimistic delete message I'm gonna do use message can have the state right here and so for this one it's just going to do state dot optimistic delete message okay so um, i think for this one we're going to do it before this and before running the await to call to super base and then we're going to pass the action message oops action message dot id right here all right so this one okay this should be good to go so right now if i try to delete the empty message again if i click here so you can see the message is gone and i think I'm, i need to remove the id right here okay so yeah so right now if i delete the hello right here for example hello world our last message if i refresh right here so you can see the message is gone nice all right so right now we'll delete it complete so next we're going to work on the edit right here all right so for edit we're going to use another dialogue component so i'm going to do the dialogue and so you can see right here so you can see this one it will pop up this right here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to install this one right here i'm going to choose the npm and we can run this one right here okay so right now maybe what i'm going to do i'm going to copy the code that we have here so if i close this one inside the message action so we should be able to have this and for everything that we have here just move it up right now i can cut this one and paste it right over here okay so right now we have duplicate so i'm going to remove this one and for the label we do not exist so maybe i'm going to go and install at the label as well all right so go to npm and let's add this label right here okay so now let's scroll down here so this is going to be edit alert and so this is going to be the title is going to be uh, this, this is going to be a button and the same things for this one i'm going to give the empty button and i'm going to give id of this one going to be trigger edit okay so um, 
right now we should be able to have this one and let hit save so you can see we only have this error right here okay nice so right now let's try to use this one inside our list message as well this is where we are going to import it and i'm going to this one it will auto import for me and now let's go inside to the message menu and trigger this one same thing here and i copy this one it, this is going to be the trigger it did so if we go back in here so right now if i should click on it did right here we should be able to pop up this one nice so right now let's try to change the style of this one a little bit so going back to our message action and so for this one let's just give it the width to full and i think everything here is, is going to center and so right now i think the only thing that i need is just one input right here okay so right now i'm going to click on this one so right now as you can see we have one of these inputs and then for class name of this one i do not need this one okay so right now this is looking good so inside here we can get the, the previous message and so same thing for with the alert right here we can get the action message right now we can scroll down and then we can use this one and pass it down to the default value so this is not going to be the value but a default value at the default check this is going to be a default value and the value of this one is going to be the action message dot text okay so right now if for example if i click on this one if i click on edit so as you can see we have this message right here very nice and for this edit right here we have this one okay that's looking good so now we have this message right here so the next thing that we are going to do is when i click on this one we're going to get the value from here and update it to superbase all right so for that i'm going to come back here so i'm going to copy the function that we have here maybe the we have a superbase right here and going back here and so right here we can first we need to get the value from our input right here so for that let's create the input reference so it's going to be the input ref equal to use ref and this one is going to be as reacts dot mutable and this one is going to be html input element okay html input element and so right now we can put our this one and you can uh, ref and then it's going to be equal to input ref all right so we should be able to have this value and so right now we're going to create a function it's going to be and all edit and i'm gonna get it right here and for this one is being called by this function right here so when we unclick on this one okay i think for this one i'm gonna remove and for edit right here just remove this one to edit message okay nice so um, for this one what i'm gonna do is to call to superbase so now superbase dot from message that's gonna be update so the update of value is going to be the text right here so we need to get the text value so for that i'm going to get the text that's going to update is going to be input ref dot current dot value and then i'm going to do the dot trim on this one as well okay so right here i'm going to check if there's a text and then we're going to call to this one all right so because if we want to update we need to call if there's a value right and so we need to do a wait and we have an async on this one as well and right now we're going to have the equal we're going to have the id and for this one it's going to be action.message.id and let's do this one right here and for the update right here i'm going to add the edit it to true as well okay so when we update this is going to be true and same thing for this one we're going to have the error we are interested in the error only and so for this let's just copy this one and then we can come back here i'm going to paste this one so right now if there's an error we toss an error l we're going to do update message successfully or maybe update successfully okay and just remove this one all right so right now let's try to test this one first 
So for example, the hey value right here, if I try to edit this one, I'm going to go with um, update it and it hit save chain. So you can see right now we have this one. So right now when we edit right here, and so if you refresh, we should be able to see this one. So we need to do the optimistic update on this one as well. But one thing about this one, so I'm going to, let's say, update this one again. As you can see, when we click save chain, this is not close. So for this one, when we finish this one, what I can do is do the document dot get element by ID is going to be trigger edit dot click. Okay, so we're going to click this one again. So this is going to be close. And so, for example, I'm going to update this one to five and then click here. So you can see update successfully close. And so if you refresh, so you can see this is update correctly okay so right now let's working on the update the optimistic for this one so one thing about this one is the same thing i'm gonna copy this but for the optimistic updates right here we're gonna pass as the message instead so you can see the i message i'm gonna pass the whole everything here so then we can later use this one to update easily and now we have this function so i'm going to copy the function that we have for the lead and this is going to be the optimistic update message right here all right great so right now we should be able to have this and so for this one what we're going to do we're going to do filter inside here and then we're going to check if this one if the message right here this is going to be the update message if the message that we have that id is equal to the update message dot id as well so what we're going to do is going to do message dot tag is equal to update message dot text and then for this one message dot is edit is equal to update message dot is edit as well okay and after that we can just return the message right here great so right now we should be able to have to use this function let's go back inside here and then for this one let's just do dot optimistic update message and then we should be able to use this and so for this one we are going to call to this one before we call to superbase as well so i'm going to call this one right here and so for the message right here we're just going to spread the action message this one is going to be the, the spread the our action message and then this one is going to pass yes this one and let's see why is there something wrong with this one okay so we have this a message right here and then let's do text of this one is going to be the text and then is it is going to be true okay and i'm going to cast the type of this one is going to be as i message all right so right now this should be good to go so if we go back in here right now try to refresh this one again and let's try to update this edit message i could just gonna remove it back to this one let's hit save so you can see this is we can see this immediately and if we refresh this is being updated nice and so right now one thing that i wanted to do is that when the user for example click on the edit and somehow they remove everything and try to save chain so for this one i want the user to pop up the delete alert so for them that they can delete this one as well all right so for this one if there's no message here what we can do we can do document that get element by id on this one so we can click close this one and then we're going to open another one which is going to be trigger that delete okay so right now for example if i click edit and i try to remove everything and then i try to save so right now we're going to pop up another one that's going to ask them if they want to delete this one and if we click continue so you can see we do the action delete instead and so right now if we refresh that one is gone as well nice so one thing that i wanted to do is to display the message to the user that if this message is edited or not so for that let's go into the message and let's scroll down into the near class one here so i'm going to have another h1 right here this is going to be um, a message is going to be edited and we're going to give a class name to tech sm 
take the gray 400 and for this one we're gonna do the message that is it did and then we're gonna render this one okay so right now let's hit save so since this one message is edited that's why we see this and the other is not so for example i edit this one as well and i'm gonna do update it and let's hit save so you can see we have the edit data right here as well all right great so right now we finish our edit so the next step that we're going to do right now this is not listened to a real time so since we have only one user so the next step is we're going to build a real-time listener to be able to for the other user to get the new message or any action such as update or delete and when they perform so we're gonna listen to that all right so right now we're gonna work on real-time listener so i have the user one right here and user two below and so for that we're going to follow super base documentation on how to do that so you can go into javascript and then you can go into subscribe to channel right here so this is the document for real time so we have broadcast present and listen to database chain for this one and this is for listen to specific database but for this one it's listen to all events so as you can see the event is star so what i'm gonna do is to listen to only the insert for now i'm gonna copy this one and i'm gonna zoom this back and then make sure i do this okay nice so right now let's go inside here i'm gonna call i'm gonna use this one inside the list message and this one is we need to do this so right now first we're going to call the use effect and inside the use effect right here we can uh, paste this one and so right now we need the super base so it's going to be super base browser super base browser and so right now we should be able to have this one nice and so for this one the room right here the channel name so this one is I'm gonna go into the chat room so since we have only one room so i can name this whatever i want but if you have multiple room so probably the room name right here should be unique depending on the room id okay and so right now i am going to go this one is gonna be the uh, channel and then we i'm going to unmount this one so return and unsubscribe this one is gonna be channel dot unsubscribe all right great so right now we should be about this and then this one is going to be messages this is going to be the message table and make sure you enable real time as well if you look at my table right now it's going to be here so you can see real time is on and if not it's you need to re-enable that all right so right now this one this that, that's it so right now whenever one of the user is send a message so we should be able to consult or lock this one okay so let's uh, do that so right now let's go to inspect and then go into the console.log so this one right here and right now let's try to send a message from the user one right here so i'm going to do send uh, message and then let's do send message okay and as you can see we have the this user listen to this one and right now we'll be able to see the console the lock so both of this one both of this user is listened to this event and this is console the lock for both and so right now what i'm gonna do is to use this one so you can see the new right here and so we can call the add message for the user one as well to be able to display the message and so for that i'm going to get the function to add a message which is going to be here so right now instead of getting from the message only i'm going to get the message and add message as well and the add message should be called here and then we're going to pass the payloads dot new but the payloads dot add message right here will need the i message right and the i message will have the user information who sent this one but if you look at the payloads right now we have only send by id we do not have like the username the user avatar so for this one we need to fetch the user information first all right so for that let's try to fetch the user data so i'm gonna do this is gonna be an error or data and this is gonna be an async function so i'm gonna do the await super base from user and then we're gonna do dot select star I'll select star here and then right here what i'm gonna do is to call that single i think no no we need to do that equal first and id is going to be equal to payload dot new dot send by and then we're gonna do dot single so because we want 
have only one single user okay and right now we have this user data so right here i'm going to check if there's an error i'm going to do task dot error so it's going to be error dot message l if it's not we're going to call to add message right here right here i'm going to create a new message it is going to be equal to spread of the payloads.new which is going to spread this object and we're going to add the user information as well which is going to be data and right now we can pass this new message into the add message function and this one is just uh, cast this one to i message okay so right now the this one should be okay so maybe i can remove the console.log so right now since we update this one so i'm going to uh, refresh this page so right now let's send a message again so i from user one so you can see be, be able to see this one inside user two but the user one right here we have double message so why we have this double message so the reason that we have the double message is because so right now this one will be listened so whenever the new record inside the database we're going to call this one right but from this user when he send a message from here if you look at the chat input it's also called to this one as well so right now this is gonna be wrong so the so right now to fix this one we can try to keep track of the message that this user send and if that message that this user sent already exists in the optimistic state and then we do not want to fetch from here again okay so the way we do that i'm going to go into the message right here and i'm going to create another fun, uh, state is going to be optimistic id and this one is going to be array of string okay and then we're going to have the optimistic id right here which is going to be empty array and so when we add a new message from our chat input right here i'm going to spread a new one is going to be the optimistic id so this is going to be spread the state that previous optimistic id with the uh, message dot id or maybe this one is going to be the new uh, message dot id right here and new message dot id all right so right now we sh should be able to have this one if we refresh this one nice and so right here what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if the optimistic ID, if optimistic ID, and then we're going to do if optimistic ID dot includes in the payloads dot new dot ID. So we can check if the new payload dot ID is included inside the optimistic ID or not. So if it's not include, and then we go into run this one. Okay and now and for this one we're going to pass the message as well messages we need to keep track of whenever there's a new message we're going to rerun this one so right now let's try to refresh both of this one make sure everything okay so let's try again hi from user one so you can see right now we have hi from user one we have only one message and so i'm going to do again so you can see we have only one message and one message so this is a good so right now everything is work out and but i think for this one since we call the add message right here so right now every new optimistic id will be added to this one as well even though this user this user it's do not end but he also have the optimistic id seen this uh, message as you can see um this one right here will be add so i think for this one we should create another function to set the optimistic id when we call the chat input on the okay and so for that let's try to create that function so is this one i'm going to copy this this is going to be set the optimistic id and let's do set optimistic id and so we need an id as a, a string and this function i'm going to put it right over here okay so right now we're going to have the id of the string and then we're going to do set and now we can have state and then this one is going to return the optimistic id 
with the previous optimistic id is going to be state dot optimistic id here and then with the new id we can do comma here and then so we can remove it from this one so now let's hit save let refresh this one and right now let's call this one whenever we set a new message and this one right here and let's do this it's going to be use a message state state dot set optimistic id and now if i do this it's going to be new message dot id great so right now let's try to refresh this one refresh this one again and so let's try to send a message so i'm gonna say hi and as you can see we have only one and we have the hi message here as well okay that's great so right now we'd be able to have this one nice uh, and but so as right now as you can see one of the thing that we can need to fix this one for the user better user experience is that so when i send a message i'm gonna say hello from user one and as you can see when we have the message right here we do not see immediately so because the scroll bar is stuck right here and when i send a message i do not see it and also same thing for the the new user from here as well so as you can see when i send a message i'm gonna say hey so as you can see the message we appear here and also appear here but we have to scroll down so then we need to fix this one to provide a user better experience for this all right so to fix the scroll bar right here so what we're going to do is to create another use effect to listen for it so i'm going to create another use effect right here and then this one okay so actually we can do it inside here as well but i want to create another one so that it's not clutter inside this use effect so first we need to check uh, get the container scroll which is this one right here which is the scroll bar and we're gonna check if there's a new message and then we're gonna scroll this one to the bottom okay so for that i'm going to create a reference so it's gonna be scroll ref is going to be the use ref and it's going to be as reacts dot mutable object is going to be html div element okay so right now we have this scroll ref right here and so we can have the reference and we can this one nice and so inside here we're going to do the get this one it's going to be scroll container is going to be equal to scroll ref dot current and we can check if there's a scroll container what we're going to do is to do scroll container dot scroll tops and this one is going to be equal to container dot scroll height as well oh not not container the scroll container dot scroll height okay and then for this one we need to get the message right here so whenever there's a new message chain and then we're gonna run this one all right so i think i just import earlier the container right here I maybe mean, i can remove it okay so right now if we refresh this one so as you can see we scroll to the bottom as well so we scroll right here if i refresh this one and right now we start at the bottom and so i can do the chat right here and test this one so i'm gonna say hello and as you can see we scrolled at the bottom and we can see the hello immediately and if this user send hi right here so we can see this is scrolling down and very nice okay that's great so right now we fix this one so the next thing let's try to listen more events from the real time such as delete and edit okay so right now it's for edit listener so this is i'm gonna close this one so we can have some space so we can go back inside our documentation and then we can copy the one that i think this one for the delete so let's go into subscribe real time and this is for delete update right here so basically we can just copy the on event right here i'm gonna copy this one and then we can paste this one right here we're gonna do dot on we can change this one so you can see this is we listen for the edit and another one i can just do another dot of this one and we listen for the update okay right so right now 
we should be about to this one this is gonna update this one to update and then the this one is going to be messages table and this one is going to be messages table as well okay great so right now let's try to see the payload of this one what it's look like and then we can from there we can try to do some operation with it but now let's go into the inspect and go into the console.log and let's try to delete so for example if this user to delete the message and i think we need to refresh as well since we're updating the our message right here so right now let's try to de uh, delete right here and i'm going to delete so you can see right now we have the delete payload and then this is just getting the old id so basically it just show us like okay this is the id that has been deleted so right now we need to use this one and to call to optimistic update uh delete this message okay so from here what i need to do is i'm going to do the optimistic delete message and then what i need to call the optimistic this one is going to be payloads dot all dot id which is we here okay so right now let's hit save this one and then i think for this one we need to uh, do for a, maybe let's try to refresh this one refresh this one again and right now let's try to delete this one and both as you can see the this one is gone very nice and make sure everything is okay all right great and let's try if the, this user is delete as well so i am going to delete and as you can see this message is gone great so right now the new message has been the delete so we work on delete and let's try to do update as well for the update is the same thing and we going to call the optimistic optimistic update message and then for this one is going to be the optimistic so maybe we can see the payload for the update first let's go here let's go into the console.log and this one for example this one is update message to hello and we hit save so you can see this is update and we have the new message right here that's being sent by this user and then also we got the old message here as well all right so for this one it's going to be really simple so we can just do a payload right here and then this one is going to be dot i think this one is going to be dot new and then the type of this one is going to be different so we can just cast type this one to optimistic update right here okay so right now let's try to refresh both of this one and refresh both of this so we can see we have the edit and we have the hello right here and let's try to edit again so for example if i edit this one so i'm going to edit this one update again and then hit save so you can see this one we can see the update immediately and this one again all right great so right now we complete everything for the insert delete and update and all right that's great so let's try to double check and test if everything uh, went wrong is there anything we need to fix so now let's try to create a new message so i'm going to say hello so we can see hello and what if i edit this one to update update and let's hit save so you can see we have this update and this update as well for this user and right now if i'm trying to de delete this one and let's try to delete and okay that's good that worked very nice okay so right now this is complete so the next thing that we're going to do is to provide a user more better experience so for example right now when i scroll down right here i should be able to have the button for the user to click and then scroll back for example uh, this one right here so as you can see this is the demo so right now if i scroll up so you can see we have this one and when i click it scroll down okay all right so let's work on that all right so to do that first i'm going to create a ui for it first and then we're gonna have this div right here and for this one we're gonna use the arrow so and then i'm gonna have this div right here uh, it's gonna be width to 10 and then it is going to be height to 10 and if you go into the lucid icon right here 
I try to search for the icon is going to be the arrow down. So I'm going to choose this one and let's copy the JSX and then let's come back here. Should be able to do this. And now I need to this one. Okay, right here, just do control that. It will auto import for me. And right now we should be able to see this one. And for this one, we need to do the position absolute. So I'm going to do the absolute and let's do the bottoms to 20. And let's do width of this one to full. Okay. And right now let's go back. So as you can see, we should be able to see this one on the larger screen. We see this one as well. Okay. Very nice. Uh-huh. So, okay. I think there's something wrong with this one. Okay, so I think to fix this one, let's go into our page, and then for this one we need to relative because it's up because the position absolute earlier is absolute to everything. So right now it's stay only here. Very nice. That's good. So let's going back here for this one. Let's give a BG of this one to blue hundred, and then the rounded of this one to full and then justify to center and then item center and then we're gonna do flex to make this one to go center and then this one to um x to auto so right now this one will go to the center maybe let's do it'll give it the border okay and i'm gonna give the cursor of this pointer and then when we hover on this one it's going to be scale to this and then we're gonna do the transition all okay so let's do transition to all and right now when we hover you can see very nice okay that's looking good so if i refresh this one so right now we got some problem as you can see when on the lowest uh, smaller screen we have this one and i think it's due to this one maybe that's okay so as you can see it's due to that um and so um, okay so maybe this one we can do translate this one to translate x to 1.2 ah, i see it's not translate x is to use the right instead so the right is should be 1.2 uh not ring is right uh, see this one as so you can see right now it's going to this position very nice all right this look good so right now when we show we need to show this one whenever the user scroll to this container so then we can listen from this container and if the user scroll right here we, sh we should be able to uh, show this one okay so right now we're gonna create a function to let's say on scroll it's gonna be equal to handle on scroll and we have this function let's create that function and we're gonna do handle on scroll okay so for this one first we need to get the scroll container which is the same thing here we're gonna check if there's a scroll container what we're gonna do here we need to check if the user is actually scroll so what we're gonna do is scroll it means like if the user scroll from the bottom and then we can do something like this so it's gonna be scroll container dot scroll tops it's less than the scroll container dot scroll height minus the scroll container dot client height and then uh, and then it's gonna be minus 10 as well okay so it means so this one is going to be for example we if this scroll like for 10 pixel in here so i think here we can do console.log the is scroll here so the log is scroll and then we are gonna go into console.log and as you can see, if I scroll here, it's true. But if I go at the bottom right here, as you can see, it's false. Okay, great. So right now, we can get the state of this one. So this one, user scroll. And set user scroll. And equal to use state of this one is going to be false. So maybe I think this one and then this one okay so right now let's scroll down here and then we're not gonna show this one right here if the user scroll and then we're gonna show okay 
right now let's do this so since the user is not scroll it will not show but if the user is not scroll we're gonna show so this one is gonna be set user scroll is gonna check is scroll right here nice so right now if we scroll up so you can see we can see if it's not we will not be able to see that so if we click in here we should be able to push down so for that let's cr uh, create that function and inside here we're gonna be on click so right here we're gonna do just scroll ref dot current dot scroll tabs is equal to scroll ref dot current dot scroll height and there you go i think maybe i can create a function for uh, this one so it's gonna be uh, scroll down is gonna be equal to this one right here i forgot the arrow function and i can come back here when i click it's gonna call to scroll down okay try to refresh this one if i scroll up and i click as you can see it's scrolled down okay very nice that's looking good Okay, so right now we're gonna work on the notification to show the user if there is incoming message or not. So for example, if the user scroll down right here and they are reading the previous message. So if there's a new message, we should display them. Okay, there's a new message and things like that. Okay, so for that, so for example, right now it's inside the demo right here. So if this user scroll up right here and if I send a message and and as you can see, we have this new message one right here. And if you scroll down, we can see that message, even his own message as well. Oh, okay. Okay, so right now, let's implement that inside here. So I think this one, we have this bug first, we need to fix it. So if, for example, if this user scroll, and for one, if this one of user scroll, and if I send, let's say, hi. And right now, as you can see, this is forced the, the scroll bar to the bottom as well. So it's not good. So we need to fix this one. So for that, let's go inside this one. It's going to be list of message. And for the scroll bar that we listen on here will be this use effect. And we're going to do the end operator here if not user scroll. So it means that if the user is scroll and reading the message and things like that, we do not force this one to go at the end of this scroll bar, okay? So for that, let we fix this one. And right now, let's work on the notification. For the notification, is going to be really simple. So first, we're going to have a state. is going to be notification and set notification okay and equal to use state and the use state is here is going to be zero and maybe i think for now we can build a ui for this one first i'm going to set the value is to two and then we're going to render the ui right here so for this if there is a notification so we're going to render a, a div right a div right here not this one and then inside this this right here we're gonna have the h1 basically we have the message new notification and then messages and then we're gonna do the ternary operator and then we're gonna show this one right here okay so now if we hit save so for example if the user is scroll so we have this message right here and for um, this one i'm going to give the width of this one to 36 bg of this one to indigo 500 let's do p1 round it to md and also the cursor for this one to pointer and hover is going to be scale this one and then we're going to do the transition all as well okay so right now we scroll up we should be about this nice but i think this is not feel like not in the center of this one i think we can fix that by moving this one outside and then we're gonna wrap everything with the another fragment and we scroll up here and then we add a fragment and then for this one instead of the break one and a half we're gonna do width to full and this one is going to be the mx to auto okay so right now, as you can see, it's it look more center to me, this one. Okay, that's good. And also for this one, when we click on scroll down, we also do the go to the bottom as well. Scroll down right here. So right now we scroll here, click, and it's go scroll down here. Very nice. Okay, so the next step that we're gonna do is to 
show the real notification and so for this one i'm going to change this one back to zero and right now as you can see it turned to this one and so for this one when we're going to add we're going to add this one and this one is going to be outside of this if so we're going to call that notification is to the current notification and then we're going to do the current plus one right here so if there's a new message we're going to display this one okay and so right now if i do this one it might set i if i scroll down so i think this is a problem so for example right here even though we at the end of this one so we don't want the scroll the notification if the user haven't scrolled or the position here at the end okay so for this one we can check if there is scroll and then we do not set the notification i think the same things for the scroll function right here so i'm going to copy this one and then we can run this one right here and also we're going to have the scroll container ref right here as well and then right here we're going to check if this is true then we're going to uh, then we're going to run this one okay so right now let's close this one and so let's try to refresh both of this refresh this and for example if i send here say hey and so if we scroll this we should see this one but if i send a message from here then i should be able to see the notification same again and right, right now as you can see we have this notification okay very nice and then for this user as well so if he scroll down and if he this user send hey and as you can see we have this notification i'm not sure there's like the animation is not looking good maybe i think we do not need to do this i guess we try to remove this one we'll try to refresh this one again so for example if the user scroll up and this user send a message so hi and we see this one nice so right now if i click go down and then if i scroll up as you can see the message is still here so for this one so when the user is scrolling down we also set the notification to zero i'm gonna set the notification to zero uh, right here very nice so right now if i click here and i scroll up so you can see the notification go back to zero and also one more thing is that i'm gonna send a message again this is again and right now one thing i want to do if the user scroll down to the end also we're going to remove the message as well so a notification because right now as you can see that when i scroll up there's a new again so if the user seen this one we're going to set a notification to zero as well so for that we're going to take a look at the function handle scroll right here and this is the condition that we need to do i'm going to do if this one and this is not going to be minus 10 but this is if it's equal so this is triple equal so it's equal so this condition it means if it's at the bottom and so i'm going to set the notification right here to zero as well okay so right now this is zero, and then if i scroll here so you can see when i scroll down the notification is go back to zero right now let's try to refresh both of this one and try again this user scroll this user send a message a not one and you can see we have this one when i click we can see this one nice and if the user scroll both of them scroll and so i'm gonna say hi and as you can see both will have a notification and if they scroll down we can see this and if they scroll down as you can see we see this okay i think that pretty much it so if the notification is complete and so the next step that we're going to do is to do the pagination of this one all right so right now we're going to work on pagination so as you can see right here we fetch all of the message so let's do that so for the pagination i'm going to limit this one to the number of 20 message on the initial load so for that let's go into the chat messages so this is where we fetch the our message so for this one let's remove this one so right now let's to do this one we can just do range and then this one is going to be from zero to the number of v1 so the limit message i'm going to be 20 and then for this one i'm going to do order and order is by created at and then also this one is going to be ascending to fault so we can want to get the latest message first and so if we refresh this one, 
so you can see we be able to get the first 20 uh, the last 20 message and but the order of this one is wrong because the seven here should be at the below so for this one we need to do reverse right here so i'm gonna do data dot reverse okay and right now if we refresh this one so this is at the below right here very nice so i think for this one to make this easy and understand uh, easy to do pagination maybe i can limit on the number two to record first and then so we can see the number right here when we do pagination it's going to be a lot easier than seeing the text right here so for this one let's do cap of this one only two and if we refresh this one we should be able to see three record because this one range from index zero index one and index two as well that's why we can see three record and then i think for this number right here we can create the variable to keep store of this one i'm going to create inside the constant folder create a new file called index.ts and let's do export cons limit messages okay and then this is equal to two and so right now we can use this one inside here so it's going to be limit messages great so okay so right now let's create the button to fetch the chat okay so for that i'm going to create a new component and this one is going to be loads more messages dot tsx and then we can do this and inside here i'm going to use the button right here okay and this one is going to be variant it is going to be outline uh, let's do the outline here and this is going to be load more and i'm going to remove the message right here so right now let's import this one and this one is going to be inside the list of messages and between this one let's import this one loads more messages right now we should be able to see load more button and for this one i'm going to give a class name and then to a width of this one to full okay nice so i think for the load more right here so for example this one will stay so i think maybe we can the visibility of this one i will do it later but for now we're going to keep on the functionality of the pagination first i think because this one if right now for example if you have no data so we shouldn't display the load more right but for now we can keep it for later okay so let's create a function to fetch more so for this one let's do fetch more and then the fetch more right here what it's need is gonna call to superbase i think the same things for fetch chat right here maybe we can copy everything from this one and instead of the server so this one is gonna be superbase browser and this one need to be the await uh, async because we use await here and we need to import this one as well but right now so this is we need to generate the from and to so because on initial load we fr we uh, fetch from rank zero to two and then so we need to pass on this number and then we can fetch uh, create a range from zero to another um, record right so for this one let's go into the uh, util function and create the function to generate the from and to so export get from and two and this one is going to be need the page number and uh, another one is going to be item per page this is going to be type number as well and for this one we're going to do let from is going to be equal to page time item per page and then we're going to do let two is going to be equal to from plus the item per page and in here i'm going to check if the page is bigger than zero and what i'm gonna do is gonna be from plus equal to one as well and right now we can just return from and two right here so the, the reason i plus one right here because i don't want to fetch to duplicate because uh, if the page is bigger than a zero we will resolve the last two, the last record will be duplicate so that's why i plus one right here to avoid that duplicate and so right now let's go in back inside here so we should be able to get this one so it's going to be get from and two and so this one is going to be page to number one and then it's going to be the limit page right here and then so we're going to get this one and from and two from this one okay so the one right here this is will we need to keep track of the state to of this one as well because as of right now on the initial load this will be page zero 
and so when we click on this more so the number of page right here should be increased so for that let's keep uh just state uh keep track of this one so for that let's go into the message right here and i'm gonna create another page and it's gonna be type number and the page of this one is gonna be a uh, one because when we initial fetch this one from the server we do it zero already and so for this one i'm gonna start with one we hit save this one and come back here we can come equal to h equal to use messages use message and state and i'm gonna do state nope state dot page okay and then we can pass the page right here so right now we can be able to have this one so and then we can use the from and to this one and then we can do the two to this one as well okay so right now we can check if there's an error we have the error right here so if there's an error so we're gonna do task dot error gonna be error dot message else so we're going to as of now we're going to do console.log data okay great so right now let's go back and do inspect right here and let's go into the console and so make sure i refresh this one and if i click fetch more okay so i forgot to call this function so when we do one click on this one and we're gonna do fetch more okay so when i fetch this one so you can see we fetch another uh, another two more records so which is going to be the four and this one right here this is gonna be three okay or three okay that's good so and all right so right now the next thing that we need to do is we need to use this data and insert it optimistic and add it to the our message right here all right so for that i'm going to go to message right here so i need to create a new function is to set messages and because we for add messages right here we add us only a single message and so for that i need to create a new function for this one so for this i'm gonna do set messages and so we're gonna have the messages as the parameter and the i messages and this is gonna be this one and then we're going to be the y right here okay so right now we should have this one so let's create a function for this and i think maybe i can just copy this function right here I'm going to copy this function, edit right here, change the name to set message instead. And this one is going to be the messages. As you can see, the type is uh, array. And then for this one, we need to spread the new messages right here as well. Okay, so and then we add the comma right here. And also for this one, we need to increase the page number as well. So we're going to do state.page plus one as well. All right let's hit save this one let's refresh this and right now let's use this one inside the load more function so this one is going to be use messages use message and then this one is going to be state dot that message i think this one right here i think maybe this one should be set messages instead of message and we should come back here and change the name of this one oops okay now that's good so then we can use this one and call this one and pass the data to this one right here so right now let's refresh this one so if i click more okay so you can see we have this data which is wrong because i think the way to be fetched right here should be we add the new message to the front instead and then so we have this one and so right now let's load more so but this one we need to reverse as well to display the right order of the message so for this one we need to do data dot reverse this one as well so if we refresh this one again if we fetch so you can get so you can see four three and then I fetch more we get two one and if fetch more this is the previous message so it means the our implement of the this one is correct so um, right now i think we can just change back our um, in constant right here to 20 message on the initial load okay that's nice so um, uh, for this one i think 
we have uh, maybe the UI right here. I think we can do a little bit of spacing between these two. Um, and in this flex call for this one, I'm just going to do gap of this one to buy. As you can see, so right now we have a little bit of space. Nice. So for this one, as you can see, um, right now, since this one, we have more message. So you can see when we fetch, it's going to fetch more. But at some point, the message is going to be gone, right? So we don't want, if there's no more message, we do not want to show this boot download more right here. Okay. So the way that we do this one is to inside the message right here, we can have the state has more. And the has more right here is going to be the boolean. And then for the initial load, I'm going to do has more. It's going to be true. And so it depends. So this one, we're going to update this one. So right now, let's hit save this one. And then this one as well. Okay. All right. So right now, let's go inside the has more to, to update this one. So for this one, let's go on the init message. So first we need to check when we get the message right here, we need to check length of our messages if it has should have more data or not. So the way that we do that, we can do condition, we have more right here, equal to messages, not length, is it bigger or equal to our limit messages? If it's equal in this one, and then so we can have has more right here. So right now, since our data has more data than the 20 or bigger than this one is true so that's why we have load more and also when we update our state right here we can update the has more right here as well so the has more right here we need to make sure that our messages right here the length is bigger or equal to our li limit message okay so let's do that let's refresh this one so let's scroll up and fetch more so you can see this is fetching more messages and let's keep on fetching more to until it's run out of more message to fetch so you can see uh, i think it has more here should be fall so we need to render this one to not display so for that let's fetch this uh, data so it's going to be has more and then this one is has more so for this one i'm going to check if it has more so we're going to render this one okay else we can just return the fragment right here so right now as you hit save so you can see it has more here tend to fall that's why we do not have more we don't uh, have more fetch right here all right so right now that should be good to go if we refresh we should be able to see this one and all right voila that's great so right now our pagination is complete so the next step the last step that we're going to do is to do the present number right here. All right, so right now for the present right here, so for this one is going to be inside the chat header component. So let's go here and this one right here. So I'm going to make a new component for this one. So this is going to be the chat present.esx and we can run our snippet and then we can paste everything in here. Let's hit save and then come back here. I'm going to import the chat present right here going to be chat present okay so right now everything should be the same and if we go back in here so for this one i'm gonna to check if there's a user we're gonna keep track of the online if there's no user i don't want to display anything to this one so because right now for example if this user is locked out so as you can see right now as you can see this is information is still display so what i want is only when the user is locked in okay and right now, so for that, let's go to fetch the user. It's going to be user equal to use user. And then we're going to have the state right here. And the state is going to be user. And I'm going to check if there's a user or not. So if there's a user, we're going to return this is L. We're going to return something else. So for this one, what I'm going to do is just going to return a div and the class name of this one is height three and width one basically i'm trying to simulate the height of this one okay so right now this one should be gone and so right now let's try to listen the present number because this is statics and so for that let's go back inside the super base documentation so you can see we have listen present this is where we can listen of the number of user that uh, 
on our application so we can have the present join or present leave so for this one i'm going to choose the present sync so i'm going to choose all of the uh, event right here i'm going to copy this so for this one we need to run the use effects to make this one work so it's going to be use effect and then for this one we're going to call this and then this one need to have a super base so i'm going to call the super base equal to super base browser okay and this one is going to be our client component so i'm going to use client right here okay great so right now if we navigate back in here so we should be able to see the same thing it's all good so right now we have this one so you can see so this is where we subscribe and then this is where we can keep track of so right now right now we can keep we display information on the online ad so right here we can add more key right here but as of now we can actually try to inspect and see the uh, console the lock of this one so as you can see right now we have the present state right here since we have two user that's why we have this two information right here okay we have two array right here sometimes this one can be more depend on how many browser that you open so if you look at a more uh, like right here so this one will add as well so if so that's why this is like keep track of how many tab that you open and it will call to this function right here so for this one we need to determine okay if the same user open the same tab we can count only once only okay so right now in order to do that we going to pass the information to this one so right now there's no much uh, useful information because we have only online ad right here so right here we can pass the user id which is going to be the user dot id oops uh, right here okay so but this user can be null so then we need to pass the user right here so make sure that this one will rerun again okay great so right now if we refresh this one and if we look at our array right here and this one right here okay and as you can see right now we should be about to have the user id and if i refresh this one and so right now let's take a look at this one again we have the user id here and also here we have both of these two user id okay nice so right now we can based on this user id we can use this one to count the number of present user all right so since this is what we get here as an array of an object on this one so what we can do for this one is going to be for loop. I'm going to do for and it's going to be an ID in Chanel that present states right here. Okay. And then for this one, I'm going to store a user ID inside the array. So ID is going to be equal to this. So it's going to be user dot ID dot push. And this is going to be channels dot present state and then so we can get an id of this one i think this one is going to be the id and then we this is going to be the array so we're going to do index zero and dot user id okay let it save this one so this is going to be complained because of the typescript error so for this one let's just do at ts um, i'm going to do at ts ignore this line right here okay so right now we should be able to see uh, this one and so for this we need to set the number of user and display it right over here so for that let's go into create a new state is going to be online user that online user is equal to use state so for now let's go in with zero and then we can change this one to the online user so i think i need to change this one to online user great so right now inside here after this loop we can just go with the uh, user id dot length okay so right now if we refresh this one we should be able to see two number then there's two user online here so for example if i close this one so you can see right now we have only one user but the problem right now, as you can see, if I open this one again, there's two user because uh, like, like I said, there will be duplicating ID inside here. That's why we have two right here, but this one should be only one. So to do this one, we need to uh, create remove the duplicate. 
So to remove the duplicate of this one, we can use the set this one. So it's going to be new set of the user that ID, and then we can just do that line. And then look like something around here. So we hover on this one. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure why. Okay, I think this one is wrong. Maybe I think, yeah, we need to do that line outside here instead. Great. So right now for this one, for the set right here, we need to upgrade our TypeScript to ES25. I'm going to copy this one. Let's go into the TS config and change this one right here. Let's hit save. And then this one, the error should be gone. And right now, if we refresh this one, we should be only one user only. And let's try to refresh this one again. So you can see, I have only one. So even though if you append the multiple tabs, it's only one message right here. Okay, great. So right now, let's go back. For example, this user is open back the apps. Let's go back here. So as you can see, right now we have two, and this is two as well. Great. So right now, everything is complete for our present. So the next step that we're going to build is to show the display message and when the user is locked out. So for example, when the user is locked out right now, so you can see, we still be able to see this list of chat. We're not switching to anything. And if we refresh this one, this is empty right here. So we should display something information to the user instead of doing this one, okay? All right, so right now let's do the lockout and then we can show the more information to the user because when we log in, we can see this state. So for this one, let's go inside the page. So this is where we switch the component. So you can see right here. So one thing that we can do right here, we can create another component. And so for this one, I'm going to create another component. It's going to be chat about. This is going to be like displaying about message of our apps. And for example, we're going to have the H1 right here. And this one is going to be, let's say, welcome to daily chat. And then for the style of this one, I'm going to give the class name of this one to text to 3 excel and font bold. And we have the message right here. So right now, let's say I'm going to copy this one right here. So when I click on lockout on this one, so I should be able to see this. I'm going to copy this one right here. Very nice. So right now we have the chat about right here. So we can use it to render right here. So the chat about. And so for this one, since when we lock out, we're going to do the uh, page refresh. So then we should be able to have the data session and then we can render this one. So for this one, I'm going to do data.session and .user. If there is a data, so we're going to render everything that you can see right here. Okay. So right now we should do this one. Else we're going to do chat about right here. And I think I need to make sure I import this one. Let's hit save this one. So right here, as you can see, we have this one, but it's not looking good right here. Right, so I think for our chat header right here, we should be able to see, but this too, we do not want to see. So maybe we can do something like here. So right now, this this is the UI, what it's look like, so we can see this one. So right now, let's put this one inside the center. So for that, let's go into text about right here. And I think we, we need to, I'm going to wrap this one with another if and then since this one is going to be a flex i'm going to do flex one and if we do the bg y right here we should be able to take the entire screen and so for this one i'm going to do flex item center and then justify center right now everything into the center and this one i'm just going to do the text this one to center and let's do space uh, uh, gap of this one, or maybe the space Y. This one to phi, we have a little bit of space. And for this one, I'm gonna limit this one to width on the 96. So right now it should be have this one right here. Okay, so that's looking good. For well, now, let's try to lock in again. So when we lock in back, so we should be able to see this one. That's nice. All right, so the last thing here, maybe I want to update this UI right here a bit. So you can see this is too much space uh, below here. 
So what I want here, let's go to fix this one. And let's go here. And right now, instead of doing the gap phi, so right now, and this one will be close to each other. So maybe I can here, I'm going to do the PB to phi instead. So right now, this is have a normal space. And then we have the space separate between the load more right here as well. Okay. So I think that pretty much it for this one. All right. So for our last step here, I'm going to deploy this one to a cell. So I have pushed our, all of our code into the GitHub repository right here. So I'm going to open to the Vercel dashboard and click on add new project. And this one, I'm linking it with my GitHub profile. And so that's why every time that I have a new repository, I link all to my Vercel. So you can see right here, I'm just going to do add right here. And for this one, we're going to set the environment variable. So for this one, I'm going to do dot env dot local. And for this one, and then for the, this is the value. And then we need to pass this one and we add this. And another one is for this one. And I'm just going to be copy and paste this one and add this this one as well. I click add. And I think for this one, just click on deploy. So right now it's deploying this one. All right. So as you can see, our deploy is complete. So if we go to dashboard for this one, and so we can visit this one. So maybe I can need to change the demo of this one, the URL. I think this one is fine, the URL. So hopefully, okay, so right now we're not logged in. That's why we see this message. So first, I think we need to come back into the Superbase dashboard and register the new URL. And so we come back here. And okay, I think for this one, we need to remove because this is my previous URL I add to this one. And so I'm going to add this one again for this new domain. And this one, I'm going to do another one is for the OS callback. Okay. So also I'm going to change this one for the URL right here to this one as well. Okay, let's hit save this one. And all right, that's good to go. So right now, if we refresh this one, if I lock in on this one, as you can see right now, we'd be able to see this one. All right, so right now let's do the demo for both of these user and interact on the real production right here. All right, so right now I went ahead and removed all the existing data. So we start from fresh. So right now we have two message right here. And as you can see, we have the online present as well. There's two user. And for example, if I close this one, I'm gonna copy this URL first. And so right now, as you can see, we have only one user that's online. And if the user is open back, so we should be able to see there's two user and there's two user right here, nice. And so right here, I'm going to say the hello from this one. It's going to be hello. And as you can see, and also we can do the action. For example, it did. And this one is going to be hello update. Save this one. And this one, we can see this one as well. And for example, this one is delete. And you can see the, the message here is gone as well. All right, so right now we need to test one more thing. It is going to be the load of this one. It is going to be the... Uh, a notification so for example i'm sending a very long message right here and i'm trying to make the now bar right here so for example if this user is scroll and we can see this one nice and right now if i say hi in here so we can see we have notification hi again and we have another notification and also same thing for this user i'm gonna say hey and we have this notification okay all right so i think this uh looking good right now all right, so maybe I, I need to add more message here for the pagination. So you can see it's working here. I'm spamming. So right now I'm trying to spamming. So you can see we have more message right here. So hopefully this is enough. Okay, this is still not enough for our new message. It's probably this one. And so right now let's try to refresh this one. We should be able to see the load more button. And so if we scroll up, we can see there's a lot more. And if I try to fetch here, it's fetch more. And so right now, since there's no more, we have no more button. So I think it's complete. Our feature is working fine. All right, so that's pretty much it. All right, so thank you so much for taking your time and watching this video until the end. I hope you learned something from this video and I really enjoy building this project as well. So hopefully you do too. So don't forget to give a like and subscribe and don't forget to share your thought in the comment. So that's pretty much it from me. So hey, see you in the next video.